Good morning, everybody, and welcome to, to Wednesday Communion. Uh, as usual, just a very simple said communion with a short talk in the middle, and then we'll bring the bread and wine to you as we take communion. Uh, the words should come up on the screen, and if you can respond with the words in white, that's great. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You know, I don't know about you, but I struggle to keep those two commandments. I struggle to live God completely, and I struggle to love my neighbor as I really should. And that's what the Bible calls sin. But the great news is that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate or representative in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let's say it together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're continuing to look through the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis, and we're in Genesis 43 this week, and again, it's another quite long Bible reading, so make yourselves comfortable. And Now, the famine was still severe in the land, so when they had eaten all the grain they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, go back and buy us a little more food. But Judah said to him, the man warned us solemnly, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother along with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down because the man said to us, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. Israel, also known as Jacob, asked, why did you bring this trouble on me by telling the man you had another brother? They replied, the man questioned us closely about ourselves and our family. Is your father still living? He asked us. Do you have another brother? We simply answered his questions. How were we to know he would bring he would say, bring your brother down here. Then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the boy along with me and we will go at once so that we and you and our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him here before you, I will bear the blame before you all my life. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land in your bags and take them down to the man as a gift. A little balm and a little honey, some spices and myrrh, some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the amount of silver with you. For you must return the silver that was put in, back into, your, into the mouths of your sacks. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back to the man at once. 
And may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man so that he will let your brother and Benjamin come back with you. As for me, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took the gifts and doubled the amount of silver and Benjamin also. They hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, take these men to my house, slaughter an animal and prepare dinner. They are to eat with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and took the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were frightened when they were taken to his house. They thought we were brought here because of the silver that was put back into our sacks for the first time. He wants to attack us and overpower us and seize us as slaves and take our donkeys. So they went up to Joseph's steward and spoke to him at the entrance to the house. Please, the, sir, they said, we came down here the first time to buy food. But at the place where we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks and each of us found the silver, the exact weight in the mouth of the sack. So we've brought it back with us. We've also brought additional silver with us to buy food. And we don't really put the silver in our sacks. It's all right, he said, don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure in your sacks. I receive your silver. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The steward took the men into Joel's, took the men into Joel's house, gave them water to wash their feet, provided fodder for their donkeys. They prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon because they had heard that they were to eat there. When Joseph came home, they presented him the gifts they had brought into the house and they bowed down before him to the ground. He asked them how they were and then he said, how is your aged father you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, your servant, our father is still alive and well and they bowed low to pay him honour. As he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there, and after he'd washed his face, he came out and controlling himself said, serve the food. They served him by himself, the brothers by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with them by themselves because Egyptians could not eat with Hebrews, for that is detestable to Egyptians. The men had been seated before him in the order of their ages from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other in astonishment. When portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anyone else's. So they feasted and drank freely with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Could do with a, could do with a brew after that reading. So. so we're continuing in this story and we come to the place now where the food from Joseph's food bank had been eaten back in uh, what we call today Israel. So his wicked brothers have to return once more to Egypt to replenish the stocks. And they explain to their father Jacob, also known as Israel, that they must be allowed to take the youngest son, Benjamin, with them. Or Joseph, who comes over as this fierce and mysterious ruler who guards the gateway to their lives, will refuse to see them. So reluctantly, following a personal guarantee of Benjamin's safety by Judah, Jacob allows Benjamin to go with his, brother, with his other sons. They also take gifts to try and sweeten up Joseph and double the amount of silver to pay for what they receive. When Joseph sees Benjamin with his brothers, he invites them all to join him for a lunchtime banquet. The brothers are naturally quite nervous. This is a powerful ruler over Egypt. Is he going to kidnap them as slaves because they took the silver back with them? But all seems to go well. They present the gifts to Joseph and the feast and the drink, and drink freely with him. Little do they realize that they're right in the eye of a storm. Joseph is leading his brothers 
into a carefully created crisis of which Benjamin, the youngest, is an indispensable part. And we'll hear more about that next week. But Joseph's purpose, main purpose and only purpose really, is to change his brother's hearts. His treatment of them, as I heard in chapter 42 last week, has stimulated their consciousness. They realize that their guilt. We all remember going back to the start where they had him thrown into a pit and then sold him off as a slave. Now, he must bring them to turn their regret and remorse into true repentance. That is a practical and proven turning away from their wickedness. To do this, Joseph's going to engineer a situation where his brothers can only escape imprisonment and servitude by surrendering Benjamin, the youngest, into slavery. In this, Joseph is recreating the situation in which his brothers sold him into slavery, and so he's putting them in the same situation again. Benjamin is now what Joseph used to be, his father's favorite and the only other son of Joseph's mother, Jacob's second wife. Joseph wants to see if his brother's hearts have changed. Has his treatment of them so far reached the desired effect? That's what Joseph wants to know. Or will his brothers do the same to Benjamin as they did to him 20 years earlier? It's an interesting test and an interesting trial. And there's no, alter no alternative. Joseph will not have his brothers as they are. It requires a complete change of heart. He's incorruptible, and he won't be bought off by the gifts of silver and honey and myrrh and all this other stuff. A change of heart is the only thing he will accept. The then saviour of the world, which is what Joseph is in that situation, he's the one with all the food and he's the only one who can keep him alive, demanded that condition. But today's saviour of the world, the Lord Jesus, demands exactly the same condition. Jesus won't accept our silver and gifts. He's incorruptible. He's a better Joseph and demands our hearts. He will only receive those who give him their hearts freely. And Christian believers should also review the basis of the relationship with Christ. It will never be a business relationship. It doesn't matter how much you put in the collection plate. It's whether you put your heart in the collection plate. Do you love Jesus as he loved you? Christians don't present Jesus with silver and gifts in exchange for this occasional supernatural leg up or I purchase a place in the new heaven and earth. That's not possible. The Christian's relationship with Christ is founded upon a surrendered heart. It's an ongoing personal relationship that should be lived out in every aspect of our Christian lives. Not just on a Sunday when we come to church, not just on a Wednesday when we come to church, but every aspect of our life. If your relationship with Christ has so far depended on your silver and gifts, you might as well throw them in the bin. Friends, you need to surrender your heart totally to the Lord Jesus. And that's what we can take from this week's episode from the story of Joseph. Let me pray for us as we continue. Lovely Father God, we thank you that you freely give us everlasting life. We thank you that God the Father, you gave your one and only Son to die on the cross for our sin and our rebellion. And you raised him from the grave and he will come again to judge everyone, the living and the dead. But Lord, we thank you that it doesn't depend on how much we give you, but on us giving you our heart. We thank you that you give us the most important thing of your heart, your one and only Son. 
And it's him who we need to give our hearts to today. So Lord, help us to be obedient to that call. Help us to trust you in every situation. Help us to love you in every situation. And help us to serve you in every situation. To the glory of your name. Amen. Well, should we stand if we're able to say the words of the Nicene Creed, which have come up on the screen? Let's say it together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of the peace and then please, please take your seats. As always, we welcome anybody to take the bread and the wine who loves the Lord Jesus and is baptized. That's, uh, and we'll bring the bread and the wine to you. So don't worry about having to, to troop out. The words, again, will be up on the screen if you can respond to the words in white. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. So with your old church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of prayers and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. So as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So friends, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed them in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Say together, most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts unprepared. We were not for eat the crumbs under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the all company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. we say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So may the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.